Hi, I'm Pastor Scott. This is Extraordinary Connection, and I'm glad you're here. In Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 and 32, Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It's the least of all seeds, but when it's grown, it becomes the greatest among all herbs. It becomes a tree, so large that the birds of the air can come and lodge in the branches. And later in Matthew 17, Jesus says, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to a mountain, move from here, and it will. There's power in small things, isn't there? The faith of a mustard seed can move mountains. The life contained in a mustard seed can grow a plant the size of a tree. But have you ever had a popcorn seed stuck in your teeth? When it happens to me, it drives me nuts. I can't stop trying to remove it. My tongue keeps checking over and over again to see if it's still there. And eventually I'll get to a point where I have to put my popcorn bowl down until that seed is dislodged. I stop the movie I'm watching. I run into the bathroom, brush my teeth, or grab some dental floss. That one seed stops everything for me. Or have you had a pebble in your shoe? The smallest of pebbles will stop your walking, won't it? Because you're going to feel it every time you step. That little pebble causes discomfort and sometimes pain in your foot. And speaking of pain, have you ever stepped on a Lego in bare feet? I guarantee you notice that small Lego when you stepped on it. Or have you ever had a mosquito in your room when you're trying to sleep at night? And you know... The virus is a pretty small thing that kind of disrupted us all, too. Just like there's life-giving power in small things, there can be life-stopping, disruptive power in small things, too. Do you remember a couple weeks ago when the giant container ship, the Ever Given, got stuck in the Suez Canal? The Ever Given was as long as the Empire State Building is tall, fully loaded, the Ever Given is 220,000 tons, one of the largest man-made vehicles in all of the world, in all of history. But the weight of the ship, the Ever Given, is the same as 55,000 elephants. Or to put it in another way, more than all elephants on the face of the earth right now. And yet, the Ever Given as big as it was and as powerful it was, got stuck for six days in the Suez Canal on some humble, unassuming sand and rock. The vessel got stuck in such a way on the sand and rock that it disrupted the world's shipping industry, supply chains, manufacturing, commerce, food supplies, and more. Because when the Ever Given got stuck, no other ships could pass through the canal all because of some humble rock and sand on the side of the canal. A simple, small thing sent disruptive powers rippling across the globe. Is there something in your life disrupting you more than it should? A small thing that, because it's been left unaddressed, has caused ripples in your personal life, finances, relationships, and more. Maybe an unresolved conflict with a loved one. Maybe a habit that you do that's starting to resemble an addiction. Be honest with yourself and with God and see if you can remove that small thing from your life to bring back some harmony. Or is there something in your church, something small, mostly unnoticed little thing that is disrupting the church's ability to do ministry in your community? Take a critical look at your church and ask what one small thing in your local church is causing a much bigger disruption than it should. Is the coffee choice for coffee hour keeping new guests from sticking around after worship service and getting to know the regular attendees? I know, I know it sounds silly, but again and again as I read books on church growth, the number one repeated thing that all the authors and all the experts talk about is the quality of the coffee at church functions. It's a small thing that 
just might be disrupting relationships and mission and outreach and engagement in your church? Or is it the signage at your church? Is there confusing or missing signs that would keep a guest from finding where they should go on a Sunday morning or during the week? Is it training of the usher staff to greet guests when they come in instead of just talking to their regular friends and kind of ignoring the guests? Is the piano in the sanctuary out of tune? Are the microphones out of balance? Are there typos on the bulletin? Are the bathrooms regularly out of toilet paper on the rolls, but that's okay, you just have to know where to look for them. Be honest with yourself and with your church and take a walk through like it was your very first time visiting and ask what one small thing is disrupting your church way more than it should. Let me know what you find at extraordinaryconnection.org.